Hi, I'm Alan Hux. You may have seen some news about Intel's upcoming discrete GPUs. I've gotten some questions about what happens if I put one of these Intel discrete GPUs in a system that already has Intel integrated graphics. My answer is it would be a lot like existing systems with discrete graphics. Many systems with an Intel CPU also have integrated graphics, but most games only use a discrete GPU. In this video, I show how we can use standard D3D12 APIs to add the performance of the integrated GPU in a system that also has a discrete GPU. Here are a couple typical gaming platforms. The desktop pairs an Intel CPU with integrated graphics and a discrete GPU. The notebook also contains Intel integrated graphics and a discrete GPU. The integrated in here is about 50% of the performance of the discrete GPU. That's a lot of performance I really like to tap into. Let's look at an example that shows the two GPUs working together. This is a particle simulation based on Microsoft's D3D12 in-body particle sample. Originally, it used async compute to run simulation and rendering in parallel on one GPU. I've modified it to put compute and render on different GPUs and added a copy step that also runs in parallel. I can choose which GPU is rendering particles and which GPU is computing particle positions. Let me show you how this works, then I'll explain how it's implemented. There are three things happening in parallel. New particle positions are computed on the integrated GPU. The previous results are being copied to the discrete GPU, and the discrete GPU is rendering results that are another frame older. When VSync is off, the frame time is just whichever of these three stages takes the longest. By adjusting the number of particles rendered, frame time roughly equals the render time. The rendering artifacts are because it's rendering particles that aren't currently animating. By adjusting the number of particles simulated, I can adjust the compute time. Now frame time is limited by compute time. And by adjusting the number of particles copied, we can see the time to copy over the PCIe bus. As long as either the render or compute takes more time, we can hide the overhead of copying. When one GPU is the bottleneck, we can see the other's power policy slow it down to save power. There's an Intel extension that affects this and our online sample shows more details. Right now I can see that the simulation time is taking a little over 14 milliseconds because we're bottlenecked on render time. If I reduce render time so that it's below 14 milliseconds, we'll see the power policy speed up the simulation time because it's speeding up the integrated graphics. Takeaway here is if your game is already bottlenecked rendering, you can offload work to the integrated GPU with little overhead. The first step is to enumerate adapters, then create a D3D device for each adapter. While doing this, you can figure out which GPU is integrated. We know we'll want to share data between the devices, but D3D won't let us just copy resources between them. We need to create cross-adapter shared resources. Those resources reside in a cross-adapter shared heap. Cross-adapter shared heaps reside in system memory. That's interesting because integrated GPUs treat system memory as local memory. Here I create a cross-adapter shared heap. First, determine the align size of our shared resources. Create the heap on one device, it doesn't matter which. Set both the shared and cross-adapter shared flags, and use a handle to open the heap on the other device. Now we can create placed resources on each device using the aligned data size. Note we can create the memory with an initial state that matches each GPU's usage model. The discrete adapter will use the resources as SRVs, while the compute adapter will use them as UAVs. Depending on the format of the data and your GPU's capabilities, shaders might be able to directly read from shared memory, but the performance may not be acceptable. The key to performance is for GPU shaders to always access physically local memory. By creating a copy queue on the discrete adapter, I can copy from shared memory to local memory and be sure that copy happens in parallel with everything else. Now we can look at the final recipe for particles with multi-GPU, a three-stage pipeline of compute, copy, and render. The integrated GPU simulates positions within its local memory using cross-adapter shared resources. The discrete adapter renders an older version of the particle positions from its local memory. The key ingredient is the copy queue on the discrete GPU. It explicitly copies from shared system memory to local memory. That way the copy can run in parallel and everyone gets to use local memory. All the queues ping pong between buffers per frame. Cross-adapter shared fences synchronize these per-frame operations. There aren't many cross-adapter fences, and I didn't find them to be very expensive relative to all the other work. In GPU view, we can see the command buffers for the three queues are all synchronized. Following this recipe, many similar algorithms could be moved to the integrated device, like physics, AI, or shadows. The main feature of this recipe is the producer-consumer pattern. Integrated graphics treats shared resources as physically local, and data flows one way from system memory to discrete memory. D3D12 APIs work well for this pattern, and it applies to any situation where there's both an integrated GPU and a discrete GPU, even from different vendors. Many async compute applications already use this pattern. 
To learn more, follow the links provided. Thanks for watching.